Hello YouTube, thanks very much for joining me. I'm Dean the Vaping Biker and tonight we're going to be having a look at coiling. If you're new to coiling and you're thinking or you're thinking of starting off uh, with drippers and so on and RDAs, then we're going to have some ideas for you here. This is just kind of to help you have an introduction to how to get a half decent coil. Now there is various uh, things we've got to take into consideration. First of all, and before we go any further, I do want to say about safety. Uh, please, please, please ensure that you have an ohm reader, which is going to look something like this one from Coilmaster, or it's going to look like one of these little puppies, or black, or whatever else. It doesn't make any difference on that, um, but it does have to be able to reasonably accurately read your resistance. And more importantly, whether you've managed to short anything or getting a dead short somewhere in your coil, because you might have a bit of wire stuck elsewhere or something like that. A lot of people at the moment appear to have got into the habit of building a coil and then just uh, hope, excuse me, having it straight on the... Uh, straight on the mod and using that to read your resistance now to be honest with you that's not the safest way of doing it for two reasons one when you're doing so it's very easy to accidentally press the fire button which is just not what you want to be doing if it's switched on and second of all it's you know yes it will tell you it's if it's got a short but I would prefer, in my my uh, sort of side of things, I would prefer to ensure that that coil is safe before it touches anything to do with any of my mods, because I don't want to risk the board on that mod catching it a bit late and blowing a fuse or fucking something. So doing it safely with an ohm reader is absolutely spot on. Once you've got that sorted out, you do need to have an awareness of Ohm's Law. Now there are mobile phone apps, there are websites, there's a whole bunch of things i'll relate to steam engine at various points through this video um they there is an ohm's law calculator on there as well there's they have an app it's just everything is super easy um but please be aware of that because you need to be aware if you're going to be doing um coiling and especially if you're going to be using unregulated mods you need to be aware of amp draw on batteries and battery safety if you do not know about that stop this video right now go and have a look at other videos regarding battery safety ohm's law and, and all that sort of good jazz and then come back and watch the rest of this video just because you need to be able to do these things safely you don't want to overstress your battery and you don't want to put your mod or you in any um in any risk if you like you know um once you these things are done safely then they're the best things in the world but just to get a bit just bare bare basics you know in the same way as you get in the car at night time you drive you make sure your lights are on it's safe you know it could fuck you up if you don't so it's exactly the same so okay what are we going to be doing today we are going to be looking at this i see a lot of coils that look like these now i'm going to do a couple of close-ups um look like this you know you see on facebook and you know somebody's put that in their rda and they go yeah clouds for days bro it's in point two yeah no 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 or this kind of jazz here i mean that's not too horrific really but it's you know it can be done a lot tidier look at the state there you've got touching wires you've got all that sort of jazz going on there's no need for any of that. There's no need for any of that. Um, the So we're going to be making some decent coils. But uh, one thing I haven't said about is to do is kind of effectively spaced coils. So they're pretty well spaced. All you've got to do to get uh, a spacing like that is make the coils in either of the two ways I show you today. You pull the legs apart. Fnaf, fnaf, fnaf. So you separate the coils um, and then you just push them all together. And then when they spring back, wallop. Done. Nicely, evenly spaced coil. So we can go into that a little bit more in another video. But this one is going to be the first of a few. And this, unfortunately, does mean that it, this one is the longest of the of the uh, of the few to, that we're going to go with. At least I think that's what it will be doing. Um, now I'm going to be doing two ways of doing the coils. One is going to be with a screwdriver. 
and the other is going to be using bits found in this now this is the coil master kit there are others like it but this one is mine um, and the only reason i'm saying that is if you're new to coiling something like this is just really invaluable invaluable you've got your own reader you've got your coilers you've got pliers you've got um, tweezers and all that good shit so you've got everything to that you're going to need to build coils in one of these um, and I do use this a lot especially when I'm feeling particularly lazy the thing is with you with the with the coilers which we'll see close up in a minute they were they, they're kind of frowned upon by the old schoolers because like you should be able to do and you should you should be able to coil without without one of those things but they're just so so easy and make life so so easy when you're uh, when you're beginning so what what we'll do is we'll go down we'll get stuck in we'll start off with the tooling like i say i'm going to show you using the coiler i'm the, um, for a twisted messes rda i'm then going to show you a screwdriver for a tugboat rda because one's the twisted messes is four posts well three posts and four holes um and the tugboat is two post um so all four wires or two wires from each side go in in the same hole if you like does that make sense um so what we're going to go for, nice and up close, I'll put the timestamps down at the bottom like I say, but as I said before, please ensure that if you do follow these, you do do it safely, okay? Um, make sure things are off when, you're, when you've got them on there. If you use one of these, you can have it switched on and accidentally kneel on or put your hand on the fire button if you're, if you're in the middle of a coil um, and all that sort of jazz. So just make sure things are turned off and you're safe. Right. Let's go down, let's build a couple of coils and see what we think, shall we? Whew, let's get stuck in. Have it. Okay, so we're not going down straight away, purely because I got to the absolute end of this video and then thought, drinking straws, forgot about the drinking straws. It's my favorite analogy to explain this to you. When it comes to wire, wire thickness, your choice of wire and um, you know how it actually works. Now, the best way I can, I can think of to describe this is a drinking straw. Now you've got a shot glass, okay, and it's full of it's full of juice or what tequila or something like that. Now, if you put this in there, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to suck it up and it will it'll go through easy enough, but it it might take a, a gulp or two to get it all up there. And that, the reason for that is because there's a certain amount of resistance, there's only so much of that tequila that can travel up this straw at any one time. Okay? Now to make it easier. What we do is if we put two straws together, we've now halved the resistance because we can get the same amount of uh, we can get the same amount of fluid or the same amount of juice or tequila or whatever else through into our little mouth hole, um, but and a lot quicker because we're doing two as opposed to one. Does that make sense? So if you try it. Go for, go for your life tequila tits off. It's Friday. Woo -hoo. Um, so yeah, one straw. Two straws. I know it sounds really silly, but one straw, a certain amount of resistance, two straws makes it much, much easier. So this is going to explain what we're going to do today. And as much as today, we're going to be doing, um, we're going to be doing dual coils. We're going to be doing two coils. Now, the reason for that is because um, if we just had one, the overall ohm reading would be around about the 0.6 level. However, we're going to be doing two. So the overall ohm reading is going to be around about 0.3. Okay, does that make sense? Now then, something else to talk about when it comes to wire is the thickness. All right, so once again, as, we, as we've figured out, there is so much um, resistance that's going to happen from this, from this one drinking straw. Now, if you're a little bit on the greedier side and wanted to get far more energy in or far more fluid in your mouth hole, then if you didn't want this, and even this maybe wasn't quite up to your... Uh, up to your thing, then <laughs> so here you go. I know I'm gonna I'm gonna suck on one of these. Um, now, obviously, there is way less resistance in this than there is in this, and it's a size thing. <laughs> so you know, for this, if you think of this as being 28 gauge wire. Okay, 28 gauge. When it comes to AWG, American wire gauge, um, the higher the number the thinner the wire, 
the lower the number, the thicker the wire. So 28 gauge, I, mean, I know we're in England and I should use millimeters and all that sort of stuff, but it's too much of my delicate little brain to cope with. For some reason, I picked it up in, in, in uh, gauges, early doors, and it's just stuck with me. So if you don't like it. So 28 gauge here, for instance, okay? Now I can get, I can put three wraps of 28 gauge, potentially over three mil and have a reading of say, I don't know, let's say one ohm. It's not going to be, but let, let, let's just say, let's say one ohm. Now, in order to get that same resistance level on here, I will need to um, wrap this rather than three with this one. I'll need to wrap this ten, for instance. Okay, um, ten times around because the longer it is, the more wire there is, the more um, aggro there is in there. The, uh, the more resistance there is. So it just, it, or the, yeah, it builds up that resistance. So it takes time to get all this around your head or in your head. But um, I find if you're worried about which gauge wires to use, I find a great starting point is around 26 gauge because you can do a lot with it. It's great for your tanks. It's great for drippers. Um, it does a whole bunch of things. But that's that kind of mid-level ground where you're not putting too many wraps out for your coils um, and you know, you're still getting a decent vape from it. But the key thing to remember is if you're doing dual coils like we're doing today, that is the two. So you're halving your resistance. One of those coils by itself would be six or 0.6. Two together is going to be 0.3. Okay. Now this also works. We're going to be doing them sort of opposite sides of the uh, of the of the RDA, which you'll see when we get into there. But this also works if we were to wrap them together. So that's called a parallel coil. So instead of have, having sort of one that you wrap around a, a screwdriver, you're going to be putting two together and wrap around a screwdriver. And once again, more wire, less resistance. And parallel coils are super popular. Different types of coils like this and all kinds of funkiness will happen in other videos. You don't need to concern yourselves about that for the time being. I just wanted to make you aware of it. And I also wanted just to help you get, I'll give you this straw analogy because for me, it's just a really simple way of getting in my head. Okay, well, if I do that, then that's going to half it. You know, it's going to be simple. And also, you know, thinner wire, mucho's resistance, thick wire, fuck all resistance. Gotcha. <clears throat> There's a whole other thing with heat flux and various other things about how much energy this is going to take to, uh, to, to shuck through as opposed to these. But we're going to come to that in a different video altogether. This is just to give you an idea about drinking straws. <laughs> I hope that helps. Right, we can carry on now. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be all kinds of fun and games with me messing around getting the uh, balance and everything else correct. So let's have a little play around and see what we can do. So let's have a look at what we've got to deal with to start with. I have got some pliers or some snips, um, and I'm using the uh, these ones that are pretty thin on the uh, on the edge there rather than the much thicker ones you can get purely because these are nice and easy to get right flush against your posts and uh, and get a nice clean cut with um, we've also got some pliers should we need them give them a bit of a pull um, we've got some ceramic tweezers for when we're putting the coil in we've got a uh, a screwdriver that's about a three mil thereabouts very close we've got a uh, a coil master um coiler i guess they're called um i'm just using this one because it's part of the coil master v2 kit that i use quite a lot but uh and then we've got the uh i've cut four strands of canthal here this is 24 gauge and um, this is what we're going to be using today. All I've done is I've cut these strands out and I have um, popped one end in a drill, held the other end with with um, a pair of pliers and just spun it around a bit to get them nice and straight. It just makes it a lot easier to work with. You don't have to, but it's entirely up to you. I find that it makes life a, little bit, a lot easier. Um, the reason I've got these two 
And so as I may have mentioned already, um, we've, we've, I'm gonna show you two different ways of coiling. The, uh, the super easy way and the regular way that we've uh, we've been doing for years. So um, yeah, these are the two different ways. The most important piece of kit you're gonna have, regardless of make, is gonna be your uh, ohm reader because we are gonna be needing that later on. It doesn't matter, you can skimp on when, whether you use one of these screwdrivers or one of these or, you know, or what kind of other tools you need, but this is what it's all about and a lot of people will sort of learn and they'll put things directly on their regulated device now i don't know about you but i don't fancy leaving the uh, fuses in my regulated device to uh, to tell me that i've got a hard short somewhere or something like that so you know that's where own readers come in absolutely invaluable plus there's always a little bit of a there's always a little bit of a difference very very few products are actually reading spot on so um you know it's it's good to have that check and something like this one it makes life nice and easy to build on because it's uh, because it's raised up obviously but we'll come back to that in a moment um for today i will be using the uh, the the original twisted messes um rda just because it's a nice and simple four post um, it's got nice big holes just to make life easier for me today. And if we have time, I may do something in the uh, in the tugboat version three, just for shits and giggles as well. So let's have a get stuck. Let's have a get stuck into it. Let's get stuck into it to begin with. Move away all of the bits and bobs we don't need, and uh, let's get stuck and get get stuck in and uh, get down to it. So. Let me pick up a piece of this canthal. Now, as I said, this is 24 gauge canthal. This, uh, your gauge you use is very, very important. I'm using it this gauge today because it's nice and thick, so you can see it nice and easily, um, and you'll be able to see what we produce. Um, but please, please, please check, make sure you're aware of your Ohm's law. Mate, that's not the first time I'm going to say that in this video either. Make sure you're aware of your battery safety. And um, it's always good, especially if you're learning, to choose or check out sites like Steam Engine as well, which I'll put a link to underneath this video, because that will tell you a whole bunch of information and give you a solid idea about where to start. So let's make get things... Oh, I can't talk today. Let's get things going. Um, what we're going to use is we're going to use this uh, this uh, coil master coiler same as the kuro coilers and all that sort of good stuff um they this comes as part of a kit i did look at the coil master kits previously so you can uh, you can go and check those out but essentially what it is is there is this uh this post here which you can choose a bunch of different sizes there's a whole bunch of different posts should you want to use them um you choose the one you want i've gone for three mil because it's very similar to the screwdriver Pop that in the cap there, screw the cap on, and we're good to go. Then we've got the top section, where you're choosing the 2.5 or the 3 mil side of things. Don't know why it's 25 and 30 as opposed to 3.0 and 2.5, but there we go. We're going to be using the 3, and what happens is you've got a hole here where you feed your, your uh, wire through, and then this just gives it a nice and easy spool. So let's do that and you'll understand what I mean. This just makes life so, so easy when coiling. Right, so we're gonna start by pushing that through enough to be able to get your thumb on the edge of that quite comfortably. So you're holding that nice and secure. Now I don't know how we're gonna do this on camera, but we're gonna have a damn good try. So once we've got that on, we choose, choose the uh, the three mil side on the, uh, on the top cap there. That goes on and you'll see you've got this screw, this grub screw under here. Now this is what's gonna be doing the, uh, the, the, the spooling or the coiling for you, if you like. So that goes on there and you catch the, uh, you catch the wire and then you just turn it round. Oops. And you count how many turns you do. Let's move the wires out of the way there. Okay, so that was one. Uh, two, three, uh, four, five, six, and I just go over 
to nearly seven again it'll spring back and then we're sitting pretty now you'll see there we're on a pretty clean coil already so what you can do then is you just grab it with your fingers and you're good that is your uh, that is a nice clean coil to be playing around with straight off the bat uh, now we are going to have to play with those in a little while but it's a good start so while you're looking at that i made these uh, pieces of wire far far too long but uh, i'm going to do another one quickly just on the side here so the wire goes in the hole trap it with your thumb that goes over the top the screw catches the wire and one two three four five six and round most of the way for luck and there we go so straight away we have two coils which are exactly the same and we're in good shape now then what i do at this point let's trim off the unnecessary rubbish that we don't need or most of it rather we'll do that for both of these see that's the other thing having a good pair of pliers makes life a lot easier um, so we've got these two wires like so now we've got um, on this RDA we will see that the holes all run along a similar sort of plane they're all they're all kind of in a line. You haven't got some up and some down and all that sort of good jazz. What you've got is them all in a line. So ideally what you want is you want to have your um, your legs, which are these sections, um, coming out on the same plane. Now, if you were to stop um, coiling a little earlier than when we, uh, when we stopped, because we did that little bit extra for luck, didn't we? Um, it would come out like so okay so we would have one coil coming from the top and one coil coming from the bottom now let me see if we can we can get this zoomed in just a hint so we've got a uh, a little bit more of a focus going on there oh no that's that's the zoom one ha ah, ah focus you bad boy and uh, there we go all right, so there's the coil, and we've got one coming out from the top and one coming out from the bottom. So what I like to do, unless you've got something like a velocity-style deck, which will have two posts where you can put staggered kind of leads in like so, what I like to do is pop that back onto the uh, onto the three mil or whatever you wound it on. We then pull that. Oh, oh. Pull that all the way down so we're back in the position we were a second ago where one is up and one is down. Oh, 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 oh. Like so. So now what I can do is I can give this a little bend out. Now on these pliers I've got one thin side and one thick side. So I'm going to use that thin side on the top of the wire. I want to try and make sure you can see what I'm doing here. So we've got the leg that's going down and the leg that's going across. The leg that's going down, I want to come out at the same, because it's coming down at the bottom, I want it to come out at that same level as that uh, as that other one. So what I'm going to do is pop my pliers on there, guesstimate that that'll bend about right, and try and keep my thumb on the wire push down and twist at the same time to try and keep everything tight because if you uh, if you just try and twist you can unroll it or unravel it if you like um, which is obviously not what you want to do but uh, but there we go so that now if we give that a little uh, shuffle that now gives us the two legs pretty much along the same plane so um, it's going to be nice and easy to install in the uh, in the RDA now with something like this one we're going to be using one of these negatives and then you miss one of the positives and then you go into the next positive the reason for that is because it makes it nice and easy to centralize in the middle you can pop your coil if your coil is let me show you now if your coil is in the middle then it's going to be able to have wick either side of it and so it can wick up 
quite nicely. If your coil is to the side, you're only going to have enough space to the wick for the wick to truly go down and do its good job on one side of it. So that's going to make that whole wicking thing a lot worse. So what we want is we want that to go in the middle. Now, if that was to go in the middle, you will see that if I pop this on top of these posts like so, you'll see that it's fine for the, the positive or one of the centers, but it's also wanting to put the other leg in that positive. So what we're going to need to do is we want to um, bend one of the legs so it fits into this negative because I, may have, should, I should possibly have said this before. These are the two positives. These are the two negatives. So positives, negatives, and obviously one leg of the wire goes in a positive and one leg of the wire goes in the negative. That's what gives us our electrical circuit. So what we're going to go for here is I am going to bend one of these legs, pop them back on the, uh, back on the doodah, back on the doodah again. And this leg that we bent forward I am now going to bend this out 90 degrees. So grab it with my pliers and bend out like so. Okay. So from that point, I'm now going to guesstimate about how far away um, when we're looking at this, that's that positive one's going in fine, but we've got to worry about getting that negative one in as well. So I'm going to guesstimate how far away that is. And that will be, say, something like that. Oh. OK, so what we've got now is they're still coming out along the same plane, more or less. But we've got that little elbow in there. Now what that elbow means, if I just loop, make sure these holes are nice and open. I really should have cleaned this RDA before I uh, decided to use it for a tutorial. <laughs> okay, so what we've got here, right, let me see if I can do this upside down to show you what I'm, what I'm doing. Right, so I can pop Try and always have one th one uh, leg longer than the other as well, because that means you can pop one leg in first, and then you can guide the second one in. So there we go. That's those two in those two holes. Can you kind of see that? And then we can push that forward. And we can see that that bend has pretty much gone into that negative hole over here. Um, nice and easily and more or less that uh, that coil is pretty close to being centered so we like that idea we like that a lot now what we can't do is or what we don't really want to do rather is we don't want to install that at this stage and the reason for that is because when we put the other one in we're going to have legs like this poking out which is going to uh, touch the other coil which we do not want, especially on the uh, the positive side. So what I do at this stage is I will hold it with my thumb and then just get my pliers, go nice and close to the posts, cut and cut. Okay, so that's nice and flush, but we can remove that and that's the perfect leg length for those coils now. All right. So then what we've got to do is we do the same with the other one. So once again, we're holding it out to the side or on the edge of the, uh, the, uh, the, the coilers. Now this is kind of bent this way from how it comes out of the, uh, how it comes out of the coiler anyway, but it's just not very tidy. It's not very clean. So what I'm doing is I'm giving that a bit of a straighten, giving that leg a straighten there. Like so. And now on this one, I'm feeling brave, so I'm just going to go straight out to the side. Okay, so that's giving us. I missed the, the uh, spell when it went that way and I bent it forward and then out. I just went straight out to the side just because it's quicker. 
but I wanted to show you the first time around how the uh, that, you know how it's done. So now I want to get that uh, guesstimate on that uh, that that forward bend again. So we'll say roughly there. Now you do have to hold the coil tight when you do that with your thumb and anchor it with your with your index finger as well, purely because it will want to uh, move around when you're bending stuff, especially if you're using um, thick, uh, thick wire. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make one of these legs a little bit shorter. When you are cutting off legs or cutting the wire at the posts, it can come out at a fair crack. So what you don't want to do, first of all, is you don't want to have it pointed or aiming towards your face in any way. Uh, you do not want to get a bit of wire in your eye. But second of all, try and, if possible, try and hold it when you're snipping it, because if you can hold it when you snip, then you're, you've got the piece and it doesn't go flying off. Um, alternatively, you know, try and make sure that you collect any bits and pieces of metal because it's very, very easy for these to go flying off into your carpet and then they get stuck in your feet, they get stuck in your children's feet and they get stuck in your dog's feet um, or pet's feet. So um, let's not have that happen. It's horrible when it does and it's a pain in the cock. What you will do as well, over time, if you build enough coils, you will end up stabbing yourself with canthal. That's just that's just a thing. It happens. <clears throat> but one of those things. So, right, let's have a little go here. I'm not going to turn this upside down again, but straight in, and we can see that that is a pretty much on the, the, on the nail, on the button, haven't it? Right, so because that one's in, what we can now do... Oops. With this, I am going to unscrew here just to take this measuring rod out just to make it a little bit easier to handle okay I'm going to push that right up against those posts um, I am going to try and find the allen key that I've lost here we go now one of the things you could do I let me see if I can zoom or focus a little bit differently for you there you go. One of the things that you can do when you're building some atomizers is when you're unsure about the leg length, you can just, once you get it to where you want it to be, bend those out and that coil will stay roughly there to some degree if you bend it properly. Um, but it'll give you a fair idea that uh, the coil's got to be in the right place because especially if you've got a three post um, or some two post uh, atomizers where you have to put one side in first, then the other, um, then just bending those out can certainly be helpful. So what we've got there is we uh, don't need them bent out now. Okay, so I'm pushing this uh, pushing this up to the, the, the positive post with my thumb. Everything's magnetized. Look at that, that lovely, isn't it? Lovely. This is where these snips come in super handy because I can get these right up close to this post and snip this uh, snip this wire nice and easily so we're in. At the same time, and I could have done this first, didn't make any difference really, um, I'm going to tighten down the negative. Oops. And the positive. Now the reason I'm keeping this in at the same time is when you're tightening these down it can pull the wires apart a little bit more and so I'm just trying to give it a little bit of stability when I'm uh, when I'm doing that. So there we go, that's that one in nice and snug to the post. So what we'll do is we'll take that out. Get the first coil that we made with the perfect leg length. Pop that in. Tighten that bad boy up as well. Everything nice and snug. I think this is going to come out at around about a point three, somewhere around there. But I could be wrong. Who knows? Who knows? Right now, when you when you tighten these up, try and make sure that they're, they're, they're nice and snug. But, you know, don't absolutely gorilla them because you will break them. Right, so there we go. There's the uh, there's the two coils kind of installed. What we're going to do now is have a little little move about with them and see uh, 
see what we uh, see see where we can get them nice and easily okay I'm just pulling that out a little bit pulling away from the positive post obviously what you don't want at any stage is for the wires to be touching the positive uh, touching the positive post or well either of the posts really other than where they're inserted okay so there we go we've got a couple of uh, couple of goes here now when you do do this if you have a uh, if you have a wire like this one that is poking down at a bit of a funky angle you can get a screwdriver in there once you've got your uh, once you've got your rod in who uh, misses get a super thin screwdriver pop it on the uh, on the lead and just give it a bit of a push and that keeps things nice and tidy I mean at the end of the day you don't have to be a pro coil builder you can just have things to make to make them look nice but at the same time what you are looking for is by having them reasonably centered you're going to get a certain level of, of benefit from that from wicking because like I said earlier on you're going to be able to have the uh, the um, the wick come out comfortably from both sides rather than just the one one of the other key things to do is when you are doing the wraps which I'll go into in a minute you do want to uh, make sure that you can them because quite often and it's very easily done that you will get to the stage of here and then you'll go oh shit why does that one look bigger and then you'll have like one more wrap on this side than you have on there okay so that's that's that all set up in there now if i turn my um, ohm reader on that's coming out at 0.32 which you can't see overly well because it's too bright you see that there we go 0.32 da 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 hey tell you it's like i've done this before isn't it um now what i'm going to do is this at this stage when it's reading point that point three two that's telling me that first of all it's reading the figure that i'm expecting it to read and second of all um i've not got any shorts hard shorts i've not got any wires touching anything they shouldn't do um nothing's fallen off the 510's not shorting out anywhere and all that good shizzle so that means that i am comfortable putting this on my regulated mod to fire it if that's needed now i don't need to do that with this because on this 521 tab is it called 521 yeah 521 um i can flick this to uh to power mode and now I can give this a little bit of a fire up. So what I'm going to do is give this a little pulse um, and uh, and just start getting a little bit of heat into those coils. You'll see a little bit of a little bit of sort of smoke come off them. Um, that's just a little bit of built up crap that's just happened over there. So, I mean, this is absolutely important because you saw what happened there. You've got it on this side. This leg gets super hot. Hang on we'll get there again oh we've got one on this side this time see this now this is why we pulse them because if you just put your finger on the power and give it full mashing straight a lot straight away that's going to melt and that's just not going to that's going to spoil your day massively so we're introducing heat into these coils now a way of making this happen a little bit quicker with your ceramic tweezers only ceramic please do not use uh, metal tweezers obviously we could hold on to that coil nice and tight, give it a little bit of a pulse. And what's happening is, first of all, the ceramic tweezers are helping squeeze the coil that I'm currently on together, but uh, it's, it does also draw away a little bit of that heat, um, which is why the opposing coil is going quicker than this one. Okay, so now if I take these off, we're not far off that one what we're looking for is we're looking for these coils to glow from the inside out now if you get any kind of dark spots or super red spots um, like I don't know if we can see on, is that on this one there's kind of a little darker spot going on here yeah so what we need to do is we need to try and work that out because hot spots will not only burn your cotton it'll burn your juice um, and just give you a generally quite not a, well quite not a brilliant vape not a brilliant vape um, 
so we need to eradicate these hot spots as much as possible and like I say we want them to heat from the inside out and what I'm doing is I'm just giving them a little squeeze keeping them tight together a little trick that you can do when you're not firing it get your little screwdriver oh that was hot um, get your little screwdriver and give the coils just a brush you can be quite rough with them and that kind of sets the coils in motion so now when I press that fire button I think they're going to come out pretty well let's have a look oh it's tense it's tense not bad not bad I'm going to give it just a tiny bit more of a squeeze squeezing them and firing gently is absolutely the name of the game at the end of the day you want to get the if you're going through all of this aggro you want to get a cracking vape experience and that means just spending a bit of time on your coils getting them how you want them to be and i'd say this isn't a uh, this isn't a perfect build not by any stretch but it is a build that would uh, that will keep you going and it's just a quick build that i throw into a whole bunch of things so that's it for the time being on that one that's firing up nicely we're reasonably centered now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that to one side and let those coils cool down before we worry about putting any kind of wick in there now as you, this was canthal um, we've gone up ever so slightly to 0.34 um, but I'm okay with that that's absolutely fine so uh, yeah there we go there's the first two coils now then the second style of coil or coil wrapping is uh, is what we always used to do is what we always used to do let me see if i've got enough left on one of these little legs that uh, i snipped off the uh, off the other one okay so this is a three mil um it's a three mil screwdriver thereabouts what did i do with the <laughs> oh there it is <laughs> honestly i lose things all over the show so there you can see you can see there it says three on it so that's a three mil <clears throat> i've got the old um verniers out and they're not far off this this may be just a hint thicker um but yeah not not terribly far off now these are just one of the um electrical screwdrivers or um you can you can pick these up in hardware stores or uh, even places like Tesco's and things like that have them. They're super easy to get and usually get a fair old size set. Um, I think it's one of these ones with the pointy ends that come in at around two and a half mil. These are three mil ish, maybe three and a bit, three and a half. Um, but yeah, you get a whole bunch of different sizes. I'm using the three mil purely because I use three mil for most of my builds because I find it comfortable. The reason using these is good rather than using something like this yeah i mean whilst you could use this because this is you could butt up a coil right up to that one you don't necessarily want to carry a date great big screwdriver around um and it has this ledge now this ledge is super super important because let me see if i can show you what i'm doing um i'm going to place the wire against the uh the hilt of the screwdriver if you like so i can hold it as such yeah then what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and wrap across there. Okay, so we've got an L shape. I'm still holding it going down, um, but we're going we're going in L shape. Now I'm going to need to just pedal about with that focus just a hint. I think. No, oh, keep going past it there we go see what this is like so what i'm doing is i'm holding that that bit of wire here if you can just about see that holding that with my thumb we've got this going over so what i'm now going to do is i'm now going to just wrap this round on itself and trying to keep the tension in the wire as much as possible okay so i've wrapped that around there nice and easily now that first wrap is going to probably get taken out because that end that joint there is pretty messy so what we're going to do now is just try and keep the tension in and try and wrap as close as we can pretty much on top of the other coil so one two three four five oh 
Now if that happens, we can just take that out. Oops, all fingers and thumbs. Now this is where I'd, I like to use pliers just because it makes life easy. We can take that out, give it a bit of a pull and we're good to go again. Bosh, bosh. Okay, so it's not quite as tidy as the uh, the other one, but we can soon sort that out. Now, like I said, we're going to take the uh, we're going to take this first wrap out. So I'm going to use a pair of pliers just to grab hold of that. This 24 gauge is quite roughly tufty. So grab hold of there and give it a gentle pull. Oh. And if you're going to release some wire in this kind of way, um, it does make it nice and easy because you are you can just pull it until you get into that stage that we're at with the uh, where are we? Where's the focus? There we go. We can pull it so we can get to that stage rather than actually having to bend things through. Um, now this is a little bit of a looser wrap, so it will need a little bit more messing around once we get it on the uh, on the RDA. But essentially, it's going to do the same job. So, <clears throat> what we've got here is giving that a nice, nice, oh, nice tug. Whoever misses, who doesn't like a nice tug? Get that nice and uh, taut. And then I am going to bend this bad boy out to the side, like so. And then bend it forward, like so. Okay, so that gives us a basic, very basic, if slightly messier coil that we can uh, we can be playing around with. And as I said, what we're going to do is uh, actually let's uh, let's see about popping that into the uh, into the tugboat, shall we? Because it's a two poster, so it's something a little bit different for you guys to see. Now, I'm popping it onto the coil master. <clears throat> okay, so here we go. Now, here we do have two posts to worry about rather than um, three with four holes, so we can only we've only got two holes to worry about as well. So we have one and one, one and one. What I'm going to do here, now if we've only got the one leg coming out that we were doing a little while ago, then that's going to mean that this coil is going to be over to one side. So what I want to do is I want to actually move that over. Da -da -da. Basically do on the, the opposite side to the one that I've already mapped about with and do the same to this side. Trying to get reasonably equally spaced on there. This is messy, but you get the idea. Pop that in there. Now remember I said a little while ago about the, uh, the bending of the legs. Make sure they're nice and tight. Pull them through. You don't have to cut them off at this stage purely because um, they're not going to get in the way when you put the other one in. But that gives us uh, the very first coil there. Now, how many wraps did I do on that one? How many was that? One, two, three, four, four. I think that was six. So quickly on the screwdriver again. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now what I've done there is I've purposely done that super messy just so we can have a little look see about how things get tidied up. You don't it takes time, it takes practice, you know. You can't uh, you can't expect to be a great coiler straight out of the bat. It is it is uh, it is quite the challenge and you know it, it to do it properly, to do it properly, it takes time. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to keep this tension nice and taut on here giving everything a little squeeze 
No, this is where you can get to put your coils back to back and go, oh no, look, even though it's 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 not as tidy, I can see that this one is bigger. So what I'll do is I'll take a uh, I'll take a wrap out of that. That's absolutely the way forward. Grab it with the pliers. Give it a bit of a pull. Bend this side up. Bend it out. And bend it forward. Like so. Same on this side. Side. And forward. Right, so it doesn't have to be perfect. Pop in here, get to this other side here. See, this is where I should have put both one leg shorter than the other, which I didn't do. But I can throw that in there. Give it a little bit of a tug. Tug. Then I can hold both coils together. Tighten up the grub screws. Like so. And look at the state of that, eh? Hey, eh? not looking too clever, is it? However, we can change that. We can get these looking nice, I promise you. So what we've got to do now is cut these uh, <clears throat> these stragglers off. Make sure you obviously don't cut the uh, the wire leading to the coil. That would not be good. Let's have this tight on there, shall we? Uh, oops. Keeping these nice and snug as much as I can. When you're doing these, you do want to make sure that you don't have <clears throat> any of these legs come out that could touch the uh, the inside of the barrel. So the part that goes over the top, um, that is something that you can easily um, conflict with if you're not uh, if you're not careful. So that's not looking too clever at the minute, but we can organise that and make it right. So I'm going to get these this screwdriver in here. Pull that down a little bit. Same with that one. Now, whilst we're reasonably in the middle, we're in no way are we are we tidy or uh, or um, um, sort of close together. So, I'm going to just give this a little bit of a push with a screwdriver. Just to help get this nice and snug. You could obviously, if you've got a little bit extra wire, you could re open or re loosen your uh, grub screw and then push that little bit extra wire out and then uh, tidy her up again. But uh, but no, I didn't want to. So there. Okay. So we're starting to get there. Starting to get there slowly. Right, now what I'm going to do is we are going to be having a little look at the uh, the firing. I'm going to start just pulsing her. Now this one is particularly janky, so I'm going to get hold of that one first in between the pliers. Let's move that in the middle. And give these a little bit of a pulsing. See this is staying together a little bit better now. I'm going to flick over and do this one, get that nice and snug. I don't know if you can hear, but there's a noise of someone digging or something outside my uh, my house, and the uh, the window has to be open, obviously. So I apologise if you do hear someone in the background going. But that's a yeah, uh, that's a thing. I can't control that. Alrighty, so here we are. We're getting there, nice and snug. Things are pulsing where they should be pulsing. 
we're not getting any gaps, we're not getting any hot spots. Okay, so yeah, it's not the prettiest, it's not the prettiest, but it will work. And we've got plenty of space around the sides and underneath to be able to get that uh, to be able to get that nice and juicy wicked. You see? Okay, so <clears throat> now that atomizer is going to be jolly warm. So what I want to do now, what I want to do now is get another home reader. Right, so let's get this home reader for the moment. This one came from Oxford Vapors and is one of the American something or others. What is it? What is it? USA ohm meters. There we go, it's one of them. Now I'm going to show you how I wick these. Um, people will wick differently and as you move through your vaping um, styles and vaping life you'll have a preferential wick this is just going to keep things nice and easy this is just Muji cotton you can buy it in Muji it's the uh, it's a big pack of stuff it costs next to nothing it's unbleached there's no angriness to it it's all natural and uh, and fabulous so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut a slither of this out like so you have to kind of guess and what's going to happen is as time goes on you'll get the eye for uh, how much cotton you need to uh, need to cut and how much you don't oh there we go now what you can do with this you'll see that some people do peel off um this the the outer kind of layers because if i undo this just ever so slightly you're super delicate with it you'll see that this has kind of a, an outer, slightly thicker membrane to it. Um, some people take that off, some people don't. I'm gonna go in the middle and I'm gonna just take one side off because that's the kind of crazy guy that I am, living on the edge and all that good stuff. There we go. Little pod trick for you as well, if you have particularly thick ones or you have a little bit awkward coils, cut the uh, top end off into a corner or an edge, or an angle rather like so. That means that when you uh, give it a little squidge between your fingers to try and get it nice and tight, um, it doesn't try and separate too much and it keeps everything nice and simple. So what I'm going to do now is pop that in there. As I mentioned before, make sure your coils are uh, are nice and cool when you do this. You don't want to, uh, you don't want it to, uh, to burn the cotton before you've had a chance to put any juice on it. Okay, and we're in. Now, what you want is you want it snug enough not to fall out, but tight, um, but uh, but loose enough to be able to move comfortably in your fingers, because that fluid has to be wicked by the strands of cotton. Those strands of cotton have to carry fluid in there. So. You know, make sure that they, they are tight, but they're not too tight. I know that sounds really difficult to explain. Well, it is difficult to explain, but it's going to give you um, maximum wicking. So at this point, for this particular atomizer, and they're all different depending on how much um, how much kind of space you've got in the deck there for your wicking, um, I am going to cut off about there. And there. Same on this side, there, and there. I'm then going to use a uh, little thin screwdriver, bend it in under the uh, under the coil, like so. Let's see if I can do this upside down. So you're bending it in under the coil, and then just delicately popping it down there, and it'll kind of flick it into place like so. What you don't want is you don't want this to be tight. You don't want it to be a harsh corner or a harsh angle because it won't wick effectively. Same here. Pull it under that coil. Give it a little bit of a push. A little delicate little snuggle and where you go and you're in. That is that side done. Same on this side. Whoops. 
there we go so that wick is just about touching the bottom of the deck which is exactly where you want it and like so so that's that one now these ones that we made that were a bit ropey but we'll do the trick we'll do exactly the same with those quickly in fact i'm just going to cut this down the middle I apologise if parts of this have gone out of focus, but uh, obviously on occasions I've had to look at my fingers rather than anything else just to make sure that I don't burn them off or cut them off. That would be bad either way. Okay, so we're pulling that through. If it's a little bit snug, give it a little movement back and forth. And what that'll do is that'll just help separate the uh, cotton fibres ever so slightly. And that will mean that uh, it will have that sort of loose tightness that I was discussing you know see if you get this kind of separation here you don't want to keep just pushing it through because if you do that it'll separate and then you'll only pull up half your uh, half your cotton so give it another little twist that one's quite snug so i'm going to work it baby work it work it work it okay that's loosening up nicely everyone's a winner so same again cutting roughly there 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 and there and once again now this is a good one to show you something that i am uh, i wanted to highlight as well once i can get these under here upside down okay there's one in and this one's a bit messier I'm afraid just getting the cotton past that little ledge of the deck now what you need to do and you need to ensure is the case at all times when you've got one of these well with with any of these coils really and i'll show you that it stands um, in both of them is once you get to have a good old look on them make sure that there is space all around the coil as much as you can so under here we've got plenty of space under the coils um, to let the air circulate around there and plenty of space on that one as well so the air can get under there and cool it nicely so that is that now what we've we got let's have a little look see i will pop on here got some lushington from stash hoofing great bottle so i'll probably over drip but we'll give it a go right stick a bit of that bad boy on there it's nice and thick. The good thing about this Muji is the fact that it does wick nice and quickly. While that bit is soaking in there, I'll stick some on here as well. What I'm going to try and do is I will put timestamps underneath at uh, relevant points in this video. I think I, I may have mentioned this all before, but like i've said in other videos i tend to do mine a little bit arse about face in as much as i recalled the uh, the building or the uh, the the the, the close-up section first and then i uh, then i go on to the, uh, the out and about stuff you know okay so there we go we're wicked we're juiced and we're firing so one of the good things you, you should get into the habit of doing as well is once you've got this, once you've fired this a couple of times, you want to just go and, and give your uh, give your screws just to make sure they're nice and snug. You know, just give them a little definite tighten. Um, 
it doesn't happen quite so much with grub screws but it definitely happens with uh, with sort of um, Phillips head screws um, and it can uh, it can be a proper pain in the ass when they get a bit loose so you know make sure that you do uh, you do give them a little uh, a little snuggle every now and then just keep an eye on them safety first and all that plus you don't want one coil burning before the other one so we'll stick on we'll stick those in there measuring up the air holes that's one done and this one doesn't have the ability to fire a coil so we'll pop that on there for the moment and make sure these fire as well which they do Make sure that they're nice and snug. There we go, fireside little trooper. Everyone's a winner. Right, finally, ladies and gentlemen, we get to go up top and have a little vape on them. Woo. So that was the up close with the build. So what I've done is I've put the tugboat on top of the Titan here. And as we uh, as we saw, the build wasn't absolutely spot on, but it was close enough for Jazz. So that's in there. We've got the uh, the the twisted messes is on the uh, the the vape forward classic. That's the one that's a wee bit tidier. But, uh, but, you know, they're both going to be doing a similar job. Now, according to Ohm's Law, we're going to be pulling in a 0.3 build at around the uh, 4.2 volts, which I'll come to in a second. Um, we're going to be pulling at around about 14 amps, which I'm more than comfortable with. I've got Samsung 25R batteries in both of these devices. So, uh, I mean, the regulated one is, is mildly less important, but... This one is unregulated, so it's well within its means of being safe. Now then, what did I just say I was going to come back to? Oh yes, the 4.2. Um, when you put, when you do this, when you have a low build, it has a much bigger draw on the battery. Okay, so the actual energy it put, it tries to pull through. That's when you're going to get a lot more sag. You're going to get a lot more kind of oops. Um, a lot more of a delay when it comes to kind of getting in there and so just because the battery maxes out at 4.2 you're very very rarely going to get 4.2 by the time you get to your coil um, but using that figure gives us a nice safe um, kind of environment to work within so let's have a little look on the unregulated device uh, to start with to see how long it takes to heat up because we're using 24 gauge we're involving something called heat flux which will go into a another stage but the thicker the wire the harder the wire then um, it's the, the more energy it needs to heat up working pretty pretty well now so that's going to be pushing out at around about the 60 watts mark maybe 50 between 50 and 60 watts depending on how much power is getting to the battery now on the twisted messes i put set that on 60 watts and let's have a look Both of them perform really nicely. It's a nice little vape going on there and it's keeping everything sort of exactly the where, where it should be. Um, got a nice amount of vapor production, good amount of flavor coming through. Um, and you know, it's not a, it's not a scary low build. So, you know, I mentioned that you don't need to have super low builds in regulated devices. In fact, uh, if anything, a super low build is actually going to upset your battery power more than anything else. For instance, those of you that have one of these little puppies, um, if you've seen these going around, if you I don't know if you would have done or not, but this is the mini vault, which is a cracking little unit. Um, but everything I build on here has a minimum resistance of 0.8 and generally will be kind of around the 1 to 1 1.2 ohm level. And that way, uh, when I was go taking this to work, I could drive to work in the morning, use it, use it in my three breaks during the day and use it driving home. And I'll still have a bit of battery left when I got here. If I was to put a 0.3 coil in there or a 0.2 coil in there it would drain that battery considerably faster 
so with regulated devices it's not all about the uh, it's not all about the 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 low bills it was when it came to mechanicals such as these or tube mods because a tube mod um, like something like this limitless here um, you very you basically you varied the or you vary the amount of wattage you're getting or the amount of power rather that you're getting to the coil by building it um, to draw a certain amount of energy from the battery that kind of makes sense ish but I don't want to go into it don't want to go too heavily into it um, and then end up kind of just you know baffling things this is going to be a series this is going to be um, part of uh, maybe three part maybe four uh, where the other videos will probably be a little bit shorter hopefully eh? um, and we'll see how we get on but hopefully that's been useful for you guys um, the only other thing that I want to in fact no I'm gonna I'm gonna put I'm gonna attach something about drinking straws if you've seen something about about drinking straws then I will have remembered to do it so <laughs> it's all about the planning but as for now I do hope that that's been helpful when it comes to uh, doing a few of your first coils and please let me know if you've tried it and if it's working for you and if you're feeling confident with coiling RDAs a little bit more now now you've seen me drivel on about it Lovely. Right, and on that note, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go and uh, have a cup of tea. I hope you manage to go and do the same. Uh, I hope you enjoy your coiling, and it's a brilliant, it's a brilliant thing to get into. Once you get into rebuildables, it's it's fantastic, and that's both with RDAs and RDTAs, so rebuildable dripping tank um, atomizers or rebuildable tank atomizers. Um, it's it just it oh flavour. And if you like a little bit of cloudage, you kind of have to as well. So, thanks very much for watching. I've been Dean the Vapor Biker. This has been a really long video. And uh, if I've got the energy, it's Friday night. I'm going to go on the sofa watching the telly and having it moderately large. Thank you. I'm fading. It's come to an end. I feel an obligation to start again